Okay, so this is the first problem from the uh, sample ENM exam, AP Physics C ENM exam. Um, I'm going to assume you're familiar with the problem. We, what we've got is this sphere with a hole in it. Whoops, well, let's try a sphere, okay, with a hole in it like that from the center of the sphere at r equals zero to the outside of the sphere at r equals 10 meters, okay? This plot here gives the electric potential due to the charge of the sphere uh, all along that hole. And a small particle with a positive charge moves along uh, this, this, uh, this track, okay? So I'll say there's our particle, and the charge I will say is Q, okay? Q is gonna be positive, okay? And so uh, what we wanna know for part A is what is the farthest position from the center of the sphere from which the ball may be released from rest and exit the sphere? So this is a mechanical energy um, situation, okay? Uh, when you leave the sphere, okay, so right when the ball is at the exit point, we want to have kinetic energy of greater than or equal to zero, okay? And uh, what's the potential energy? The potential energy is gonna be the charge on the sphere, which is Q, that's unknown, times V at 10 meters, okay? And so if you look up at the plot, V at 10 meters is 60 volts. So it's gonna be Q times 60 volts, all right? So now uh, it's released somewhere in here. So, let's, so the mechanical energy here has to be, the mechanical energy at the end, sorry, is K plus U. So the mechanical energy then has to be greater than or equal to Q times 60 volts, okay? Now, it's released from somewhere inside, so I'm gonna to point to the initial spot here, and we're gonna release it from rest, okay, because it says release from rest. It's gonna have K equals zero. Um, e, oh, sorry, not E. Let's go with U equals question mark, okay? Uh, but what we're gonna say is U is gonna be Q times V naught, okay? And that means the initial mechanical energy, which is K plus U, is just gonna be Q times V naught. So now, this is, I, I'm almost making too much work out of this, okay? Uh, this is gonna be a case where mechanical energy is conserved. So E is conserved. So what that tells us is Q times V naught has to be equal to, well, that's gonna be our, our initial mechanical energy. That has to be greater than or equal to Q times 60 volts, okay? Now we know that Q is positive, so we can factor the Q out without changing the uh, direction of the inequality. So we know that the initial voltage, the voltage at which we release it, has to be greater than or equal to 60 volts. What does that mean? That means uh, right here on the plot is where we have 60 volts, and if we can release it anywhere to the left of there, it will escape the sphere because it'll have enough energy to get all the way over here, okay? Think, really, this is just, now that we've reduced it to this, you can, you can think it's just like a ball rolling on a hill, okay? Uh, where can you release the ball from and have it roll all the way off and leave the right side? Well, you have to release it from higher than this point, okay? So, uh, basically, the answer is that the uh, furthest position from the center of the sphere is R equals 2 meters, so R equals 2.00 meters, if you want to, if you want to give it the three sig figs. Um, yeah. And I think this has all justified the answer. You're told to justify the answer. If you want to justify it verbally, you could say something like, uh, because the ball has initial kinetic energy of zero and needs to have a final kinetic energy of at least zero, um, it needs to be released from a point where its potential energy is equal to the potential energy it has when it exits. And that means since the charge stays the same, the potential has to stay the same or has to be the same at both points. So you have to release it from a point where the potential is greater than or equal to 60 volts because that's the potential when it exits. Something like that. Okay, now part B, uh, I'll, switch to, uh, I'll switch to green for part B. Part B says the ball is released from position indicated in part A and exits the sphere. Describe the magnitude and direction of the ball's acceleration between R equals five meters and R equals 10 meters. Justify your answer. So we look here is five meters and here is 10 meters. How do we find the acceleration? Well, the force, okay, on this thing is gonna be equal to Q times the electric field, okay? Whatever the electric field is in the sphere. When we have a plot of V versus X, 
Okay, this is something, uh, if you don't remember this, you should remember this. E in the x direction is negative dv dx. Okay, sorry, d. For some reason, my pen is trying now to do, okay, dv dx. Okay, so uh, there's a negative sign there. So you take the slope of uh, dv dx, and, or the slope, the slope of v with respect to x, take the negative of it, and you get the, uh, the electric field. So what do we have here? The electric field, uh, actually, let me, let me go ahead and plug this in and say the force then, or actually we're supposed to find the ball's acceleration. So let's go and go MA equals the force equals, I'll just write this in QE, which is going to be equal to uh, negative Q D, come on, I think one of the sensors in my, um, my tablet is a little weak. D, come on, D, oh wow, uh, <laughs> I'll just write it a bunch. Okay, D, there we go. Okay, negative Q dV dx. Okay, so, uh, right, so we'll get A equals, come on. Actually, I should, should I have done X? I probably should have done R. So I'm, let's pretend I did, did, did R instead of X. Okay, R, R, my apologies for that. So you're going to get A equals negative Q over M, M, <sighs> come on, pen, M, DV, DR, okay? And I would say, um, so you have to describe the magnitude and direction, okay? So... Uh, I would probably answer them and say, so uh, the magnitude is going to be, uh, I'll just write magnitude A is Q over M. Oh, come on. We know Q is positive. M has to be positive. DV, DR, okay? And... Let's see, what, let's, let's check the sign on this. We're going to have a dvdr. This is all uphill, so dvdr is going to be positive. So we're going to get positive. Q is going to be positive. Mass is going to be positive, okay? So there's that. And the direction will be, well, um, it'll be, looks like it, what we have up here, if we, re, if we read this part, okay, A is negative Q over M dvdr. We have a negative sign. We know all this stuff here is going to be positive, so it's actually going to be left. So uh, it's going to be toward r equals zero, or towards the center of the sphere. Okay, so I would probably say that. If you want to describe a little more, uh, you might say uh, you you might go. I you know I don't know exactly what they're going to want from you. I'm going to try to draw a straight line here. Let's see. And say right there, that is about tangent. Okay, let's see if I can move. Well, I can move the whole line, but I can't. That's not quite tangent, is it? Okay, so. Um, oh, I see. Wait a minute. Can I? Ah, okay. So something like that would be your tangent line. You could do this on paper. You wouldn't have to be nearly as klutzy as me. Okay. No, now I just got rid of it. Um, and now I, unfortunately, I can't, let's see if I can, oh, down, there we go, beautiful, okay, so, sorry, I'm just learning this software here, so I'm going to look over here and try to find the slope of this, uh, but see, you're not given Q and M, so I don't know how much, how, how, whether this is a good idea, um, we're all kind of flying in the dark here, so I'm going to say here we have, this is at about, uh, 5.7 meters, 0.7 meters, and this is at zero volts, okay? And then here, I have around 9.3 meters, 70 volts, okay? So what I'm gonna get is, uh, I'm gonna basically say the max value of dV dr in this region, okay, meaning the region they described, is, uh, so 
they're going to get 70 volts minus 0 volts over 9.3 meters minus 5.7 meters. Okay, so we're going to get 70 volts over, what's that going to be, 3.6 uh, meters. So this is going to be around, uh, this is going to be close to 20 volts per meter. So I'm going to say roughly, and so, since, since I'm, you know, uh, uh, just, just sort of eyeballing this, I don't think anything more than one or two sig figs is really necessary. So is this right? 20 volts per meter. And I don't have my calculator handy, so I can't give you a more accurate thing. So maybe if you wanted to add to the stuff in the box, um, I, I think, actually, I think what's in the box is probably correct. Maybe if you want to uh, add to this a little explanatory note, say where uh, Q is the particle charge and M is the particle mass, okay? And I realize I'm, I'm, I'm looking very uh, unorganized here, but something like that. And maybe if you want to add an explanatory note, you could say the maximum it gets to 20 volts per meter, but you can't really tie that to any particular acceleration without knowing the actual charge and mass of the thing. So I would probably say uh, what I have in the box plus maybe this is enough. I wouldn't worry on the test if you had a question like this. If you had a question like this, I would not worry about the stuff that circled. Okay, uh, so let me uh, check and see where I am uh, time-wise. I think I'm I'm going to stop. No, actually, I'm going to keep going, and we'll we'll fit the video in. So uh, let me erase this. Part C asks us. Hang on a sec. Let me. Pull up part C on my phone, multitasking. Part C asks us uh, to state one feet. Oh, so we're given. No, actually, you know what? Now, <laughs> now that I waste all your time, I think I am gonna gonna kill the video now and, and record the next bit in a separate video. Okay. So, uh, amplifier escape. 